What is going on you guys, this is TechHD coming at you with a brand new how to video and in this how to video what I'm going to be showing you guys is how to set up the Netgear XR500 Pro Gaming Router. Now if you guys have not seen the unboxing and setup of this, I'll have a link down in the description below, it's basically my previous video and pretty much I'm going to be showing you guys how to hook everything up and then do the best quality of service, the best in geo filter and all that to get the best possible performance to lower that ping and to keep your connection nice and stable. So let's get right into this. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go over to our modem. We want to disconnect it and remove all type of power. That will restart everything. If you don't do it, most likely your XR500 won't work and you'll have trouble uh, setting everything up. Then what you want to do, you want to go over to your router. You want to disconnect everything, Ethernet power, all of that. Then you want to replace it with the XR500. You want to connect the Ethernet cables, the power source, but then don't power it on. We want to go back to our modem. We want to connect it and then wait until all the LED lights are on and need to be on. Then we go back to our XR500, we turn on the power, and then we wait until we see everything is solid white and that we have internet. All right, you guys. So after multiple hours of really messing around with this, I believe I got a good amount of knowledge and all of this stuff and pretty much knowing what I believe, what I believe is the best type of settings that will be great for gaming and all of that. So for me, I make videos, I stream, and I, uh, I also play video games and stuff. So I want to really keep an eye on my download, my upload, my ping, all of that. So I organize the home screen for this main thing. So I have the geo filter that, that allows me to see what I'm connecting to, how far the distance and all that. I mainly play Call of Duty, so I have a set to like around 500 miles and I live in New York, so that's a good radius to connect to people, I think a good amount, as well as I have on the right side, the devices that I have connected to it. So like my PlayStation and my Xbox One, as well as it has the filtering mode and spectating mode. If you don't know any of these things, you could hit the little question mark on the top and then it'll explain to you what you think which one will be best for you filtering mode will block connections outside of the distance radius uh to to force a host inside the radius where spectating mode will not block it outside of the radius this is more for like pc gaming so they say but as well as i have the ping that makes me see how my ping is whenever i'm in a match or anything like that as well i could do that auto ping thing but i like to have it manually to i can always see what my ping is as well as I have my wireless status that just shows me my SSID and my password, stuff like that. I got my anti-buffer blow. This one is for congestion. So like if I'm doing something heavy like watching Netflix or uploading a video while I'm playing a game, it's nothing crazy. It won't affect my game and it explains it all right here. Anti-buffer blow is disabled when the sliders are set to 100%. If something is using all your bandwidth, then small appliance applications, I almost said appliances, uh, small applications like games will be forced to queue causing lag. And then you lower this, uh, the slider. They say 70 should be good. It says set each slider to 70% when you're gaming which is what I left it as I didn't want to mess around with it as much as well as I have the network snapshot of the bandwidth that's being taken up right now what's the upload what's the download for each devices as well as I, I scroll down you can see the QoS this is the QoS and I'll show you guys a bigger uh, picture of it but I got the QoS and these are all the devices that I have connected to I have like over 15 devices connected to it and the majority of them are smart devices because I have the Echo the Amazon Echo Dot and it was working with all these devices like the smart plugs the light bulbs all of that and so you know here and there it's offline sometimes they're online so that they could keep uh, and I on um, when I tell it to turn on stuff as well as I have my laptop my gaming PC my consoles on my phone all of that so if we go to the geo filter like I showed you guys in the home screen I have pretty much everything I have the devices so adding devices is very simple it already shows you what how what your devices are already connected to it so these are all the smart devices as well as I got the Chromecast security cameras all that when you automatically add a uh, console like a PlayStation and Xbox it automatically just adds it if you were to add something like a laptop or a PC it'll tell you specifically what type of game you will you'll be playing and then it'll filter it out so what's cool is that they have profiles as well so like something for example like Call of Duty you want to get a nice small radius so that your ping is very low where if you're playing something huge like Battlefield or PUBG or something that has multiple people then it might be difficult to find those people it might take a lot longer so like something like PUBG the distance is set all the way to max so it's basically worldwide so it's gonna be a lot easier to find people but like it's not 
so much caring about ping they're just trying to get like a crazy connection for me when i was testing it out i feel like 2000 miles was good for me but uh, i'm gonna try this profile as well or like something like halo it filters it out a lot more so then about 1252 miles will be good and you could change it over here for miles to kilometers but i just like to keep it to miles as well for call of duty is about 760 miles i set it to 500 because that's that's the one that i like as well as it has the allow and deny so like if you have somebody outside of that radius that's a friend of yours you could allow him so you could easily connect to him and not have any issues like not allowing you to connect to people for some reason you could allow him as well as if there's people in your radius that's giving you a high ping or lag or something like that you could deny them so you can never join them again which is pretty dope and then if we go over to qos this is where we have the anti-buffer blow which like I said is congestion I just keep that at 70 and then you can see that there's a bigger picture of the QoS so for me for download is very important for consoles so the way that I have this I have the game room PC the PlayStation and the Xbox because those are the main things I use I have it set to 28 so if we go it explains it all right here at least 10 to 20 percent to your gaming devices so they can have enough bandwidth so if I were to connect to one of the devices like the game room PC, I have set that to 28%, which is taking up about 60.22 megabits per second. And then if I were to connect to the Xbox One, 28 as well, 59.6 megabits per second. So I have it all organized. You could organize it by percentage, or you could organize it by the slider, or you could organize it by the uh, the bandwidth of how much bandwidth you want to add to it. And then you can do that as well for upload. Now for upload, it's not so crazy for console use. So I don't have it that much. Um, so like for example, the Xbox is set to 28%. And that's pretty much this one right here. So about 59.6. Uh, PlayStation, I did not set that one yet. I just kept that at 12. But Game Room PC, because that's when I'm uploading stuff. Or if I just want to, yeah, like if I'm uploading a video while I'm playing a game, I have that set to 47%. So a little bit higher because that's why I really care about upload is not that crazy for console gaming so we have the traffic prioritization information how many packets how many all of that information as well as traffic prioritization you can add a device so if I were to let's say the Xbox one if I were to add a device and if I want it to be specifically game console or if I want to go more advanced what type of port all this but I'm gonna do just basic so game console and then I could do that. You have a manually added a service to traffic prioritization. The service will now automatically prioritize by your router, which is really cool. So it goes more in depth with this. You do this all manually, but it also does it automatically for you, which is pretty dope, as well as the device manager. Now, what I love about this is the way that this is all organized, how this map is. So you got the router in the center. You got the stuff that's connected to the 5 gigahertz band. You got the stuff connected to the 2.4 gigahertz band as well as you have all the offline stuff so stuff that's not being used right now so like my Chromecast all the other devices because I'm not telling um, the Echo Dot to turn this and on as well as the Xbox One it's not being utilized as well I got the WAN that's connected to the modem and then I got the wired stuff so my PlayStation my PC my security cameras as well as my Xbox One but that went completely off my PlayStation's on sleep mode so that's why if there was anything that needed to be downloaded in the background you could do that and that's why I really like it looks really dope also to organize this is pretty cool so if I were to click on the PlayStation I could give it a name I could do the device type I wish there were more options um, and then it shows me the MAC address and the wire and the IP address all that and I can also block stuff so if I don't want anything if somebody found out my password and wanted to connect to me I can easily block them so getting into the network monitor you can see the network snapshot which is what I have in the home section so I have to download the upload what's being utilized a lot right now and which is mainly my PC and my Echo Dot so I could keep an eye as well as the network overview as well as another way to keep an eye on the stuff and what's taking up more upload then really much download and then here is more download and really much upload and you can, it's all in real time which is really really cool system information isn't really that crazy this is just for if you guys want to know so much more about this so you got the RAM usage you also got the flash usage as well as the CPU which is crazy as well as the system information this is just if you want to have uh, if you know that you have the latest firmware 
all of that the chip that's being used it's nothing crazy for what i think will be the best options because you don't really have to mess around here for it for settings if we get into it this entire thing you don't have to really mess around with except in the wireless settings you want to make sure that you have the highest up to 800 megabits per second and up to 1.7 uh, gigabits per second that equals to close to 2600 uh, I don't have guest network enabled as well as the LAN setup everything is good here monitoring isn't that crazy I don't really mess around with that as well as the content filtering I don't really mess around with that either and the administration I just want to make sure that I have the latest firmware update which I do uh, USB storage if I want to connect like a flash drive or any other external hard drive to it I can do that uh, advanced setups is where we get really into it so in the advanced wireless setups I want to make sure all the way in the bottom that I have uh, beamforming enabled for to boost the wireless speed as well as the range and the reliability and when you're farther away from it as well as MU MIMO that's when multiple devices are it's sending out all the information simultaneously and then instead of sending one out each to each devices uh, individually that's why I want to make sure as well as port forwarding I want to make sure that a couple of ports are open to give me an open that type so for example like Call of Duty World War 2 on the Xbox One and the PS4 I have those ports open port triggering I don't mess around with that much I also want to make sure that UPnP is enabled to automatically open Open ports as well and then IPv6 I set that to auto detect so now it's using six to four tunnel and then VLAN nothing crazy and then the LED control settings that's pretty much it so these are pretty much the settings that I have uh, when whenever I'm gonna be playing and then this is the home section that I have because I think these are the most important things that I that I should really keep an eye on whenever I'm playing so if anything would ever happen I could easily mess around with it here in the home settings so there you guys have it hope you guys enjoyed the video this has been the how-to of how to set up everything with the Nighthawk XR500 gaming router uh, it's with Netgear and also Netduma and this is my settings my preference what I would prefer to uh, set up the router so let me know down in the comments below if you guys own one of these routers also let me know what your settings are which ones do you think is the best for a certain game Game or for a certain console and devices like that let me know down in the comments below i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified that i upload every single week follow me on facebook twitter YouTube, instagram twitch as always take i'll catch you guys in the next video peace